Welcome you to another one of our programs from the Megs Point Nature Center. I want to let everybody know that the programs that I'm doing, we have longer versions of these that we typically would be doing with school groups. And one of the main programs that we do with school groups is our Moraine Trail or time travel geology. If you've ever been here at Hammonasset and looked at these rocks, these giant boulders and wondered how so many boulders ended up in one place, that's what this program is all about. So if you look at these rocks, there are lots of different shapes, sizes, colors, textures. These are very different rocks from one another. And that is a sign that these rocks are not from the same place. So in order to tell the story of how all of these rocks came to be in one place here at Hammonasset, we have to do some time travel. And we are actually going to travel back in time about 21,000 years. If you go back in time 21,000 years ago, standing right where I'm standing right now, you would have been under a mile of ice. There was a massive glacier known as the Wisconsin Glacier that covered all of Canada, most of the northern U.S. It went down to Missouri and here it went all the way out to Long Island, which you can barely see on the horizon today. It's a bit hazy. 21,000 years ago, that glacier reached where Long Island is today. Long Island Sound did not exist. Ocean levels were much, much lower than they are now. The ocean was actually 200 miles from the edge of Long Island out. There was a giant flat plateau and then the ocean, so 200 miles of this broad plateau. On that plateau were some very large animals. There were large plants, and those large plants were eaten by very large animals. Animals like, similar to this, sort of like a hyena today, okay? And to give you an idea of the scale, of the hyena done. That's how big it was compared to a person. That's a large animal. They also had some giant elk. These elk roamed through the giant plateau, that 200 mile plateau. All right. And an idea of how large the elk were. That's why I say giant elk. They had this one. Its name translated terrible boar. So this was like a giant wild boar. Look at that. That's the size of a horse. Okay. Imagine a wild boar that large wandering the areas out there. They, we also had these mastodons and woolly mammoths. Okay. These large creatures, there's an example of their size. The mammoth was larger than the mastodon, okay? Sometimes people, fishermen actually draw up their teeth in fishing nets. So sometimes we get a mastodon tooth right out here in Long Island Sound. Okay, so these animals were roaming. We had ground sloths. Everybody knows a sloth today. They're not very big, three or four feet. They move pretty slowly and they spend their lives up in trees. The ground sloth, the largest of the species, was this big. They were so large that they did not climb the trees to get their food. They just stood up and ate the food out of the tops of the trees. They ate leaves. And then my favorite, many people's favorite, the Silmadon, the saber-toothed cats, also known as saber-toothed tigers. These roamed the area, okay? And there's an idea how large they were. So like a large lion or a, or a tiger stalking in that beautiful forested plateau. So the glacier, a glacier is made up of ice and when ice freezes, it expands. So as more water is added to the glacier through rain or snow, any sort of precipitation, it expands the glacier and the continues to put when it reached long island 
I didn't hit a land mass and couldn't go any further. Um, what happened was weather got warmer. Worldwide, the temperatures were getting a little bit warmer. So the expansion of the ice was became equal to the melting of the ice. It was melting just as fast as it could expand. It was still growing. It was still getting bigger. But the edge stayed in one place because it was melting. What happens then is rocks and debris that are in the glacier, in the ice, as the glacier melts, they are left behind. They're dropped off. The glacier continues to expand. It's doing something called plucking. And as it scrapes along the ground, it plucks up boulders. If you look at these boulders down here, now we have people there, so we're going to look at that boulder. So those giant boulders are picked up by the glaciers. Boulders the size of small houses or buses are picked up by the glacier, carried to where the glacier is melting, and dropped off in a giant long line. Now, if the weather gets warmer and the melting of the ice is greater than expansion, then the edge of the glacier moves backward. It moves north as it melts faster. And it leaves behind that long line of till, of debris that it had picked up and carried forward. That is a moraine. And in the case of Long Island, it's actually made up of a few moraines, but that is a terminal moraine. That's where the glacier terminated or ended. So, it's getting warmer. The glacier moves pretty quickly because it's getting warmer faster. And then the temperatures stable out again. And they stay the same for another period of time, maybe 200 years, maybe 300 years. The temperature stays about equal and it creates another moraine. More rocks have dropped off and that's where we are here today. We are on a giant moraine. This moraine is so big, it stretches from out here, 200 yards into Long Island Sound, all the way across Connecticut, almost to Rhode Island, over in Ledger, is where this moraine ends. So a giant moraine is left because the glacier stayed here for hundreds of years. So temperatures get warmer and the glacier, the melting is now again greater than the expansion. So the glacier moves further north. Sometimes if the temperature went the other way and it got colder, the glacier would come forward and push away and erase that moraine. But we don't have signs of that because the giant wall of ice would have just pushed the rocks in front of it away. So we can't see those moraines that were created and then covered over. But we can see the last moraines that the glacier left, the last time the glacier was here, which here at Hammond Acid, it's 14 or 15,000 years ago, the glacier was here. As a glacier melts, water comes from the glacier, just like when we melt an ice cube. And the type of water that we get from a glacier is fresh water. And that fresh water flowed down into the depression. So Long Island Sound, before the glacier, there was actually a riverbed. So it was a low part of the land. The water flows down and begins to build up in the depression of, uh, that was left behind. All of that water is also trapped because Long Island was a moraine. It was a giant moraine that acted like a dam. So a freshwater lake was formed where Long Island Sound is today. And that freshwater lake filled with water, filled with freshwater, and we call it Lake Connecticut. So Lake Connecticut then forms where Long Island Sound is today. The glaciers continue to melt and they're melting faster and faster, and the water is flowing out of them. Again, sometimes it would slow down, and sometimes it would speed up, but when we talk about glaciers, nothing is very fast. The glaciers are melting, and water is running off of the glaciers, flowing down, filling up Lake Connecticut until it breaks the dam. Where the race is today, at the eastern end of Long Island Sound, the water breaks through, there's a waterfall down to the plateau, and it pretty much drains Lake Connecticut, is drained out into the ocean. So what's happening now? All of the glaciers are moving up into Canada, but the water is going into the ocean. So the oceans begin to rise. And all of our fantastic creatures, the cave bear, starts to move. They follow the glacier, okay? This was a giant bear. So the cave bears 
now they need to move away from that plateau and they start to move up into Connecticut. They're following the glacier. Now you can't get too close to the glacier. Remember, it's a mile thick wall of ice and it's melting, which means chunks of ice are falling from a mile up, falling down and crashing and dropping rocks with them. So if you get too close to that, you probably couldn't get more than half a mile or a quarter of a mile from that wall of ice because the big chunks of ice are falling away. But away from that, plants are able to grow and animals now are able to live. So they start to move and they're living in Connecticut. So these cool creatures that were out in that plateau are now roaming what is now Connecticut. All right, so the glaciers are keep on melting and they end up going all the way up into the northern parts of Canada, into the Arctic, where there are still glaciers today. The water flows down it flows through out into the ocean until the ocean level rises to the point that it begins to fill up. That depression that was Lake Connecticut begins to fill back up now with salt water. So the water begins to rise in now Long Island Sound. A sound three sides by land. It's a deep cut into the land. Um, and that's what we have today. It is open at one end and surrounded on three sides by land. So Long Island and Connecticut form Long Island Sound. The ocean rises and it actually floods the entire Rhode Island end of that moraine. That moraine stretched all the way from Rhode Island to New York. The Rhode Island end now gets covered with water. Eventually it breaks through at the New York end and that isolates Long Island as an island. So now we have Long Island as an island. We have Long Island Sound. We have rivers that are formed from the water melting away from the glacier. So the Connecticut River and the Housatonic and these large rivers were formed as the water melted away. And we have Long Island Sound as an estuary. There's a really good vocab word. An estuary is a body of water where fresh water and salt water mix. So all of the fresh water that is flowing from the rivers of Connecticut, mixing with the salt water of the ocean, means that Long Island Sound is an estuary. So that's pretty much where we are today. We have a moraine here. It stretches through Connecticut, but most of it is buried. You can't see it very well because it's been covered with soil and plants and trees, and it makes it very difficult to distinguish the moraine from any other hill. But if you visit Hammonasset, the highest point right along the Moraine Trail, looks like just a, a brushy hill, that's actually our Moraine. It is large boulders that are buried here at Hammonasset. Okay, so that was 21,000 years of history in about 10 minutes. Uh, I'm not seeing any questions. If anyone has any questions, you can put them up at any time. So, nope, I'm not seeing any questions right now. Let's take a look. All right. We can look at these boulders. No people are there anymore. So most of the boulders that were brought here are from the Hartford area. They're all from the north. Most of them come from the Hartford area. They could come from further. We... Geologists have poked around down here. I think they found some from Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire. Uh, they said they didn't find any from Canada, but that doesn't mean that they couldn't have traveled from as far away as Canada. And if we tip it back, you can look at Long Island Sound. It is a beautiful day here at Hammonasset. The park is actually closed right now, so more of you, if you want to visit, you're going to have to wait till the park reopens. Do we have any questions? All right. Again, where the humans at that time. So initially the humans would have started uh, hunting the animals in Connecticut. I don't believe that they ever were out on that plateau. However, we do find lots of remnants uh, right along the coast of Connecticut, lots of uh, spear points or projectile points because we don't know whether spears or atlatls or, or um, what have you. But the water was lower, much, much lower then. Um, 
So we do have signs of humans at that time. Any other questions? Okay, I want to remind everyone that you can see our programs on our YouTube channel. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can also continue to view them here on Facebook. And you can go to the Virtual Learning Center at MegsPointNatureCenter.org. You can also send us comments. So if, you, if you're not watching this live, you can send us a comment or question. We'd be happy to try and answer everyone's questions. And if you have ideas for future programs, I'd like to see those as well. So also, if you have any pictures or... Uh, crafts that you've done that are along the lines of the things that we're doing, I'd like to see that as well. And maybe we'll share them on our virtual learning center. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in to our time travel geology program. And again, this is a shorter version of the uh, grander, longer program. Just thought I'd give you a taste of what our students would be doing if they were able to come out this year, which unfortunately... We couldn't do any students. Maybe they're watching now and are learning all about the moraine here at Hammonasset. I want to thank you for tuning in. Remember, these programs happen Tuesday to Friday at 11 and 2. Tomorrow at 11 o'clock, I'm going to be doing a program about American eels. They are absolutely fascinating creatures. And then at 2 o'clock, I will be visiting one of Connecticut's state forests. So since ham and acid is full, why don't you find a nice state forest somewhere? It'll probably be nice and shady, a little cooler, and you can go for a very long hike or have a picnic at one of Connecticut State Forests. Thank you again for tuning in, and I will see you next time.